Okay, so how do you know whether the answer that you're writing, especially when it's under exam conditions, but just generally the essay you're writing is going to be worth what you are aiming to get. So how do you know what your essay is going to get out of 20, let's say. So um, today I'm gonna to be talking to you about how to really break down the way that teachers will allocate marks to students. And I think this is really valuable because it really will show you what to be focusing your time and attention on. Because a lot of the time, especially with English, students are focusing on particular things that aren't necessarily going to be yielding them the marks that they're looking for. Okay, so my name's Carla Sabella. I've been teaching English for about 20 years now. I have taught students uh, across New South Wales in many different schools. I've worked with teachers and I've got a lot of experience, um, particularly when it comes to the allocation of marks and what is going to make the biggest difference when you get time, um, when you get under those exam conditions. So um, what I want to start off by saying is how much or letting you know how much, how many marks are being allocated for what we call answering the question. So Answering the question well is one of the biggest things that teachers are looking for. And it really is so important for you to be able to demonstrate because how can teachers distinguish whether or not a student has really understood the material or whether they've just, you know, memorized something that a previous student's written or their friend wrote or they found online um, without really fully understanding it. So this part about being able to answer the question is just so fundamental. Um, and we've got different videos on, you know, how to do that, especially for different texts. But what I want to get clear with you on today is how much, how many marks teachers are allocating for these particular things. So straight off the bat, how well you answer the question, it's worth roughly about seven marks, seven out of 20, which when you say seven out of 20, doesn't sound like a lot, I suppose. But if you think about it, if you write the most perfect essay, amazing analysis, like the best essay anybody's ever seen on this particular text, um, but it does not answer the question at all, let's say like zero reference from the actual question itself, you just got this amazingly polished essay, you're looking to get about 12, or maybe 13 out of 20. So for a student who is writing such an amazing polished essay, that's a pretty low mark, <laughs> okay? So um, what, and not what you would most likely be aiming for if you were writing to such an amazing standard. Now, then if you think about, let's say you don't answer the question at all, you've got analysis, which is pretty good. Um, you've got some good quotes in there. You've, you know, got your paragraphs set out. You've got some decent analysis, but maybe sometimes you don't explain the effect of the technique as well as you could have. Then you're looking at getting like a 10 or 11 out of 20 if you haven't answered the question at all. So hopefully that gives you a bit of perspective in terms of how important it is to answer the question and how many marks are actually giving to that particular that particular thing. So then when we come down to these seven or so marks that they're giving you for answering the question, how is that kind of broken down? So, you know, if you were getting between, um, you know, like a 13 and say 20, what's kind of in the middle and like, and where do you need to focus your attention? So to answer this question, I'm going to actually share a document um, and we're going to go through that particular one just so that you can get uh, get an idea of, um, you know, what, what they're looking for. So let me just share my screen here. Alrighty, so this is a document which actually allows you to mark your own work, which is a pretty rare thing for English because, you know, it's not like maths where there's just one answer, right? Um, and then, you know, you sort of have your different ways of going about it, but there's really only one answer. Here, English is, there's a lot more variables, um, but there's not as many variables as you would think. So hopefully by looking at this particular document and um, understanding what the like facets are that they're looking for, you can kind of get a better sense of again of where to focus your attention. So starting with the introduction, um, has the first, for your first sentence of the introduction, have you directly created an argument for the question? Okay, this might look a bit similar to your comprehension task where you sort of rephrase direct words from the question, but add your own statement or response to it. You cannot just parrot or repeat what the question says. That's not engaging with it. You have to use the direct words and then come up with your own sentence using those particular words or your own argument. The next thing is, have you used keywords of the question to create your argument, like in the next sentences of the introduction? And ideally, these particular sentences in your introduction should match up with the arguments in your paragraph and not in the way where you just go, oh, I just, I'm going to just change my topic sentences around and keep the analysis. You have to actually 
go from what analysis do I want to have in my paragraphs? And then how do I formulate a topic sentence that's actually going to match up with my argument? You can't just change words of the topic sentence. I know some students have these like, oh, fill in the blanks of, oh, I'll just write this prepared sentence and then I'll just put the word of the question in there. That's not necessarily going to work because A, it probably isn't really going to make sense and B, does the examples you actually have or do the examples you actually have in your paragraph actually match up with the topic sentence that you've actually written? So um, what I always recommend students do, and I'm just going to share um, another document here too about answering the question is, you know, how do you break down the question? All right, so underlying the key words is so important. Then just to get your head around what they're asking, think of a synonym, think of a synonym, let's say for each word, then link the key words to the topic sentences or more specifically the ideas of your paragraphs and then you'll start coming up with how the question they've actually given you really ties into the argument or the actual working out you have which is what's in your in your paragraphs so once you actually do that work to think about how the question is going to be relating in your paragraphs that those are the sentences that um or those are the ideas you should be writing in your introduction Right, so we've got a first sentence that just really like has one sentence that uses the words of the question and has a response to it. It's like your thesis statement. Then you follow it up with your points that you're going to be arguing in the essay and how they relate to the actual question. And then you've got, um, and then this is a really crucial one, does your integration of the words of the question make sense in these sentences or have you just shoved it in there and not really thought much about how it actually or whether it actually makes sense? Okay, and then of course, have you introduced the text and the composer and, and so forth, right? And there's other things involved there. Obviously, you want to introduce context and that all comes into play, but that really depends on, you know, a lot of what you actually say um, depends on the actual text that you, you are doing. Um, but when it comes down to answering the question, using those words throughout the whole introduction, making sure it makes sense, making sure what you've actually set up in the introduction follows through in your paragraphs, is really important. Then we come to the paragraphs. Have you used the words of the question to write your topic sentence? And does the sentence actually flow and make sense? So really important, like try to read your work aloud when you do it. That's a really good tip for self-editing. You'll often pick up on things that don't necessarily make sense or that needs improving on your own. And, um, you know, students get so attached to the topic sentence they've prepared. And that is just really problematic because if you've gotten, you know, you've written a topic sentence, you've edited it, you've gotten a tutor to look at it, you've handed it to the teacher, you're like really keen on this sentence and you just love it and it's, you know, that's the only thing you're going to write. That's a problem because that sentence is not going to answer the question that they give you on the day. Okay, so do not get attached to introductions, topic sentences, final sentences of paragraphs and conclusions. These should all be written from scratch. So when teachers say don't memorize an essay, those are the parts that you should not be memorizing. Obviously, you do need to memorize something, otherwise you wouldn't have an essay to write. So what you should be memorizing is hopefully you've got a structure that works well, you've got your um, you know, points, you've got some good quotes, you've got some analysis, okay, great. But it's the introduction, topic sentences, final sentences of in, uh, paragraphs and conclusions that have to be written from scratch based on how you break down that question on the day. And these, this takes time. You know, the first time you do it, you might just think, I'm never going to be able to do this under exam conditions. It just takes too long. And I've got so many people, um, students who just go, oh, I don't have time to think about how to answer the question. I've just got to write all my material out. Again, big problem. What's the point of putting all this information in an amazing analysis and all this writing if you haven't answered the question? So what I always say is, write two paragraphs instead of three if you have to but answer that question because it's always going to be worth way more marks to ask the question well than to have more content so once we get to the point of you know um you've got say um you've got some really good analysis and then how do we start moving up in the marks to get from like that 13 to that 20 point and really it just comes down to how well you actually do these things that i'm saying here so with the paragraphs 
all your topic sentences link well to the question and have been rewritten and crafted specifically for the question. The evidence that you have in the in the paragraphs all matches up with what you've said in the topic sentence. You haven't just written a topic sentence using the words and then your actual analysis doesn't really link back to it. Have you used some words of the question in your paragraph? So with the points you've actually selected, do they link back to the question? And then with your final sentence, does that link back to the question as well? And you know, maybe once you have mentioned the question a few times, you might want to do some synonyms um, if it's getting a bit repetitive. But you know, main point is get a link it back with the conclusion. Have you summed up your key arguments? Um, you know, and again, use the <laughs> use the words of the question. And this doesn't need to be long, right? So the conclusion, and by the way, conclusions are worth two marks automatically. So if you miss a conclusion, automatic deduction of two marks right there. Always have a conclusion, even if you have to cut your last paragraph off short. You have to do maybe a couple of dot points if you want to always write a proper conclusion even if it's one sentence thus blah 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 link back to the question what's your key argument okay you do not need to restate the text again that's not really needed you've just done a whole essay on them um but do have that conclusion so based on how well you are able to do all of these things in your essay that's where you start moving up in levels so someone that does this obviously 100 percent they're gonna be getting like the 20 out of 20 if their analysis all kind of matches up and works well and it's sophisticated. Um, someone who does a really good introduction and then maybe a first um, topic sentence really well for the first paragraph, but then completely forgets about the question the rest of the time, it can definitely happen because you know, you're know you under exam conditions, you've got to get it all out, yada, yada, you forget about answering the question. That's probably gonna get maybe like a 17 out of 20. Okay, now on the other hand, if you miss answering the question for the first half and you start working that out maybe from your second paragraph onwards, but it's really not there properly in the introduction of the first paragraph, you're actually going to get a lower mark for that. So because um, if you figure out how to answer the question halfway through your response, that's obviously not going to be anywhere near as good as the fact that you actually worked it out initially, thought about it, and then got started in that direction. Um, so a student who's kind of answered it well for the second half of the essay, probably getting like a 15 out of 20, again, providing the analysis and so forth are all good. So, um, and the other reason for why it's so important to start strong is it's the first thing the mark is going to actually look at, right? So they're really deciding about 80% of your mark from just reading your introduction and like, let's say the first half of your first paragraph. From there, <clears throat> they're just going to be skimming. So does the analysis match up? to the topic sentence, have you got techniques? So then skimming for keywords, name the technique, quote, okay, link to the effect. All right, great, next one, looking. And then they're always skimming for those keywords. That's, that's why it's so important to use those because they stand out the most. And are the best, again, the best way to distinct, distinguish you or distinguish the fact that you've actually answered this question. You haven't just memorized something and regurgitated it, which is obviously what most people do because actually answering a question is really hard <laughs> and it takes a lot of practice. And so one of the things that students can often do in terms of um, procrastination, actually, it's weird to say that you're procrastinating by doing particular work, but it is procrastinating if you are just spending so much time trying to curate your content, write more, get more examples, edit more, um, and then not actually go and do those questions and do it under exam conditions. Again, very big difference doing this process when you have all the time in the world versus doing an under exam condition. So you've got to practice doing it in the 40 minutes. And then in that regard, you've got to know your content as well. So you're not going to get to look at notes when you get into the exam. So you've got to simulate that as much as possible, um, simulate the exam conditions as much as possible so that you can actually recreate that when you get under exam conditions. So spending all this time writing more and finding more content and whatever, it ends up being a waste of time and not something that is actually going to um, you know, give you the marks that you're actually looking for. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea about, you know, where they're allocating marks, where to spend your time. Again, it's always better to write less content, but ask the question really well, especially in an age where we've got things like chat, chat GPT and, you know, all these resources available. The only way teachers can really assess that you understand the content is by seeing how well you've answered the question on the day. So really make sure that you spend enough time um, practicing that before you actually get in. So when when I say practicing that and enough time and how many times is enough time, I would say like you as many times as it takes for you to be able to write it out in 40 minutes with a new question you haven't seen before, not picking at any notes, 
right? And that you then can go back and self-mark your work. So another thing that I think is really useful is when you actually do a practice essay, you don't always have someone around who can just mark it. It's not like maths where you can just like look at the answers and check what your mark is. You need someone experienced to actually mark your work and give you that feedback. So one of the things you can do for yourself is you can actually go get a highlighter, go through and start highlighting where you've actually used the words of the question. And then you can use this, um, you know, the formula I've given in terms of editing your own work to go, oh, have I answered the question using the words of the question in the introduction throughout the whole introduction? Or did I just use it in one sentence? In the first paragraph, have I actually gone to the topic sentence or did I just forget about it in the topic sentence and start and then mention it halfway through the paragraph? Okay, there could be a marked deduction in that sort of regard. So highlight through your response see how well you've actually accomplished all these things so if you've accomplished it about 50 percent then you'll be probably looking at getting about 16 out of 20 um maybe 17 right so then the better so let's say you've done 80 percent of what i've written on the document on how to answer the question you're going to be getting you know kind of 18 19 out of 20 so that's i think a really good way of you again being able to assess your own writing when you don't have someone that, like a professional marker sitting around waiting to give you that feedback and um you know just look practice 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 you know like do it until you can do it the way that it needs to be done in the exam that may take five times for you in terms of writing it out it may take 10 times but you've got to keep going until you can really like get it in that time um to the standard that you know they're looking for